American farmers look to science to grow better crops and protect them from disease and pests. And that research has dramatically improved how much we harvest from each acre. So where did it all start? Well, one plot of ground in central Illinois plays a significant role in the history of that research. Our Gabriela Zaragoza has the story. When we harvest this, we're going to harvest the two stripes out of the middle and uh, take the plot weights. Bob Dunker is an agronomist with the University of Illinois in Urbana. As he stands in this field planning the harvest, he's like any other farmer looking at a crop. These yields are probably going to be fairly low because of the fact we had quite a bit of stress you know, early in the season. But the field in this case is a very special one. These are the Morrow plots. Sitting almost in the center of the University of Illinois campus, they are the oldest continuous agricultural research fields in the United States. Planted way back in 1876, they've been designated as a National Historical Landmark. The original idea was that uh, Illinois soils were so resilient that they would not need additional fertilizer when cropped. The idea was that corn could be grown on these soils for a long period of time without adding any additional fertilizer. So from 1876 until 1904, there was never any fertilizer applied on any of the 10 treatments. The plots are named after George Morrow, one of the early agricultural pioneers who played a role in those first crop studies. Originally only corn was planted, but research on crop rotation to improve yields introduced oats and alfalfa. Later, soybeans would join the rotation. Rotation does have an impact, and whether or not it is fertilized or whether it isn't, uh, the continuous corn has generally been the lowest yielding treatment, followed by the two-year rotation, and then the highest yielder has been the three-year rotation. But corn remains a constant in these fields, which look at soil conditioning, fertilization, and plant density. This particular plot is one of the check plots on the moral plots. And by that I mean that this particular plot has never had any fertilizer since the inception of the experiment in 1876. You can see that the plant densities are fairly low and uh, the corn is particularly yellow and showing the effects of not having enough nutrients for a proper growth. Over the years, detailed records have been kept on planting, yields and soil conditions. You cannot duplicate this set of plots anywhere else in the world. There's nowhere where you'll find a corn plot that's been in continuous corn for 140 years. Also, we have very accurate and well-maintained records over that 140-year period. We know exactly what was done to each plot, we know where it was done, and we have individual records of every plot and subplots since that time. There were originally 10 plots as part of the ongoing agricultural experiments. Two were lost to campus expansion in 1895. Five others simply seeded back to grass. The remaining plots were subdivided and separated by permanent borders, but the size and plot configuration hasn't changed since 1903. Darren Jose is harvesting oats from the plots. Each subplot is carefully cut and the grain measured for weight and moisture. These details will give scientists information on a variety of variables. It gives the farmers an unbiased uh, view or ability to select different types of hybrids or in this case different types of cropping systems that might fit their needs but it's an unbiased uh, way of determining those needs. Now, I don't know any farmer that's going to grow corn for 140 years but it does give us an insight into what these soils if they're not properly maintained and fertilized those kind of changes can happen over time. Bob Dunker says the historical importance of the Morrow plots cannot be overstated. When the school built a new undergraduate library to the west of the plots, it was designed with the floors underground so that shadows from the building would not fall on the crops. New construction to the east was shaped with similar concerns in mind. But these are no mere historical fields of dirt. Bob Dunker says they are important to modern American agriculture. We have a committee within the college and the department that we look at the moral plot treatments over time and decide whether or not we need to adjust some treatments to meet you know, present day conditions. In the future, there may be other applications as we move into um, you know, molecular biology to, to test or look at different methods of, uh, of those kind of technologies and how they impact plant growth. It's a sense of pride for the university. So you really feel honored to work here because there's been a lot of scientists that have come in and done work 
that have made significant contributions to agriculture. So you're really walking in the footsteps of some real legends when you work here. By the way, if you're wondering where the oldest agricultural research plot outside the United States is located, well, that honor is claimed by Rothamsted, England. Research plots there began in 1843. And that'll do it for us this time on America's Heartland. I'm Paul Ryan. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you next time.